Hi everyone, welcome to the chapter of electric forces, fields, and charges. Alright everybody, let's look at our first example here. Example number one, Coulomb's Law. So an alpha particle of helium atom has a mass of 6.64 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms and a positive charge of 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. So this is the charge, 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. The two spheres are separated by 0.5 meters. So this is gonna be 0 0.5 meters. Um, they have a mass of 6.64 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. Uh, find the gravitational force between these two particles. Okay, so this is coming from our knowledge of universal gravitation. So what we're going to be looking at is this equation, force of gravity is equal to g m1 m2 r squared. So what we know is all masses are always attracting each other. So there's going to be a force of gravity right here going towards this one that's attracting this. So like we learned before, all objects, all masses attract towards each other. But if they're really small, it's really, uh, it's really a small amount of force, so we don't really notice it. That being said, we should know that G is going to be 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. M1 is that going to be right there, which is going to be 6.64 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And then this at a uh, little item right there. So 6.64 times 10 to the negative 27 kilograms. And they are a distance 0.5 meter or so away from each other, 0.5 squared. So if we put this into the calculator, what we get is 6.67 times 10 power of negative 11 times. And this could be the tricky part is putting into your calculator correctly. So make sure that uh, if you have to take your time with it, to take your time. Uh, if you need to do one step at a time and not do it all at once, if you're not comfortable with that, make sure to do that. Because a lot of times with this chapter, people are putting into the calculator wrong. And when we see the force between each other is 1.176 times 10 to the negative 62 newtons. So what you're gonna see right here is this force is tiny. This has 62 zeros in front of it, okay? So this force is tiny. So what we're gonna notice is it barely attracts each other, okay? Of course the mass itself isn't that big, but uh, you should just know that the force of gravity between these small uh, particles are just really, it's gonna be very little because their mass is so little. Next is, what is the electric force between these two particles? So we know that the force of electricity, looking at Coulomb's law, is equal to the K constant, the charge of one object, the charge of the second object over R squared. Um, so what I'm gonna do is a K constant, I'm gonna be using nine times 10 to the ninth. And then the charge of this one is gonna be 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And this one is also 3.2 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And we see that they're a distance 0.5 meters away again, 0.5 squared. Now again, we have to put this into our calculator correctly. So again, this is force of electricity. So we're gonna be seeing this formula a lot. So again, take your time when you put it into your calculator. If you did the universal gravitation formula, it's very similar, except instead of objects being really big, because we were talking about planets back then, we're gonna have, objects are gonna be very small, because we're talking about atoms and electrons and things like that, okay? And what we should get is around 3.67, 3.67 times 10 to the negative 27 newtons. And this is still very small, this force of electricity. However, it's it's many, many times stronger than this force of gravity. We can see that this is gonna have 62 zeros in front of it. This only has 27 zeros in front of it. That being said, will the particles be going toward or away from each other? So there's a force of gravity going towards each other and there's a force of electricity going away from each other since they're both positive. 
okay? However, since this is way stronger than the force of gravity, that means they're gonna be moving away from each other, okay? So that's good to know. That's the first problem here. All right, so let's look at the next one. An electron and proton initially separated by a distance d are released from rest simultaneously. The two particles are, are free to move. When they collide, are they at the midpoint of their initial separation, close to the initial position of the proton, or closer to the initial position of the electron? So one thing to know, I'm just gonna kind of draw this out. So we have an electron over here, and then we have a proton over here. And we wanna know, so they're attracted to each other. They're attracted to each other. So when they're, they're gonna be moving toward each other cause they're attracted to each other. And we wanna know where do they meet? Are they gonna meet at the midpoint? Are they gonna meet closer to the position of the proton? So are they gonna meet closer to the proton? I'm gonna put B here. Or are they gonna meet closer to the position of the electron? Why don't you think about that for a little bit? What I want you to realize with this is the force of electricity is gonna be the same between the proton and the electron. So the force of electricity is gonna be the same. However, there's something different about these two. So what's different about them is this mass is a lot bigger than this mass. So what we should know is if this is a bigger mass, then this is gonna be having a harder time to move. And this is a smaller mass, so it's gonna have an easier time to move. So this is one, even though they have the same exact force, this one's gonna accelerate a lot more than this one, so they're gonna meet a lot closer to the proton. Since this have a hard time to move, this has an easy time to move and they have the same force, they're gonna meet a lot closer to the proton, okay? So close to the initial position of the proton B. Okay? Look at this next example. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so we have an honest problem here. The Bohr's model, the force responsible for the electron's circular motion is the electric force of attraction between the electron and the proton. So this is a hydrogen atom. Um, what we know is the hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. So this is the positive proton here and this is the negative electron there and they're kind of spinning through it. Given that the radius of the electron's orbit is 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11, so it's just like interesting to think about. So this is the radius, which is equal to 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11 meters. And the mass is 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. So we know the mass of this proton is equal to 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. It's just interesting to know that like, just like planets orbit around like suns and stars, what's happening is electrons are orbiting around the proton. So it's like, and s some protons, uh, so depending on the atom, what we have is we have many electrons kind of orbiting around the proton and the neutron. So it's kind of like a little solar system within these atoms and they're kind of acting the same way. So now the question is find the electron speed. What we should know is this electron is going really fast around this. However, what we should also know is they are attracted to one another. So the force of electricity between the electron and the proton, they're attracted to each other and it's moving really, really fast like this. It's kind of like the planet's moving really fast around the sun. So now I want you to think about this. Like how are we gonna find how fast this is going? And what I want you to think about is again, this is kind of like the universal gravitation problem where instead, instead of the force of gravity being equal to the force centripetal, it's now the force of electricity that's gonna be equal to the force centripetal. So force of electricity is equal to force centripetal. So what we can do now with this problem is we can do K Q1 Q2 R squared is equal to M B squared over R. And what we're looking for is this V. Okay, so we're gonna do nine times 10 to the ninth 
Q1. So the charge of this one, it says an electron's charge is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 uh, uh, coulombs. So we have is 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. And then what we should know is a proton has the same exact charge, it's just positive. So this one's gonna be 1 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19 coulombs. I'm just gonna leave them both as positive. I just kind of use the absolute value. So I'm just gonna leave it like that. And they are a distance of 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11 squared. Okay, so that's the force of electricity. And we know this is gonna be equal to mv squared over r. And we're gonna think, okay, what, which mass are we gonna use? Are we gonna use the mass of the electron or the proton? So we're gonna be looking for the one that's spinning and moving quick, which is the electron. So we should be using the mass of the electron. So that's gonna be 9.11 times 10 to the negative 31 kilograms. V squared, that's what we're looking for, over the radius which we're, uh, that's given to us. 5.29 times 10 to the negative 11. So now again, what we're doing is we need to use uh, calculations to figure out what this V is. And break it down for yourself. This, this is hard. Maybe solve this side first and simplify this. But if you could do it all at once, do it all at once. But this is again where people get the most, uh, they, they get many mistakes. So I'm going to just one thing that I'm just gonna do is, since this radius and this radius is squared, I'm gonna get rid of this and put it like that. Get rid of one of those, okay? And now I'm gonna put it into my calculator. Again, this is where many students make mistakes, is putting it into their calculator wrong. So if you need to take it step by step, um, there's, no, there's nothing wrong with doing it step by step. Okay, 5.29 times 10 to negative 11. And then divided by 9.11 times 10 to the power of negative 31. And again, don't forget to square root it. Okay, so you're gonna have a pretty high number. Electrons move very, very quickly. So what I have is 2,186,524 meters per second. If you want to have that in scientific notation, that's totally fine. But that's how fast it's going around this proton, okay, for a hydrogen uh, model. All right. So we're going to go to our last one for this part. Talking a little bit about superposition, which is just like a fancy word for just saying there's multiple forces because there's multiple charges or multiple masses. So let's look at this. A charge Q1 of negative 5.4 microcoulomb. So this is negative, which is important. And microcoulomb is just 5.4 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Okay, so this is key. You're going to see this microcoulomb a lot, which just means negative 6. And a charge Q2, and this one is also negative, which is going to be negative... Uh, I guess I'll put the negative for now. So negative 2.2 times 10 to the negative 6 coulombs. Oh, sorry, that's for this one right there. Is on the axis one meter away, so it's one meter away. Find the net force acting on charge Q3, which is positive 1.6 microcoulombs. So this one, I'm, since it's, this one is positive, I'm gonna put this one in red. So this is gonna be 1.6 times 10 to the negative six coulombs, okay? So what we're gonna find the net force acting on charge Q3. Uh, so we wanna know what the net force is located at 0.75 meters. So a few things we have to know. So since this one is negative and this one is positive, we know that there's gonna be a force of electricity between them. So force of electricity between them. What we also should also know is this one is positive and this one is negative. So there's gonna also be a force of electricity between them. So there's a force of electricity for this one, one going that way and one going that way. So I'm gonna, we're gonna figure out what this force of electricity is. So I'm gonna first do the one in black here. So force of electricity is equal to K Q1 Q2 over R squared. And again, when I put into the formula, I'm just gonna do the absolute value. So I'm just gonna do nine times 10 to the ninth. Q1 is 5.4 times 10 to the negative six. Q2 
and then the Q2, I'm gonna be doing this one because I'm trying to find what the force of electricity of the, these two are. So I'm gonna be putting, and this one is 1.6 times 10 to the negative six. And they are a distance of 0.75 meters away. So I'm gonna put 0.75 squared. Now I'm gonna put that into my calculator. Times 10 to the ninth, times 5.4, times 10 to the negative six, times 1.6, times 10 to the power of negative six, divided by 0.75 squared, and we get 0.14, so it's 0 0.14. So what we should know is this one is getting pulled to the left 0.14 newtons. I'll probably put it a little bit more clearly later on. But now we wanna see how much is it getting pulled to the right by this charge. So I'm gonna do this one in red. So force of electricity is equal to again, K, Q1, Q2, R squared. Uh, K is again, nine times 10 to the ninth. Q1, I'm gonna make this one Q1. It doesn't matter, you can make this one or this one, doesn't matter, but I'm just gonna put this one for now. So this one is going to be 1.6 times 10 to the negative six. And then this one, Q over here is gonna be 2.2. 2.2 times 10 to the negative six. And they're a distance of, so their distance from here to here is 0.25 meters. So this is gonna be 0.25 squared. Now I'm going to put this into my, whoopsies, my calculators, 9 times 10 to the 9th, times 1.6 times 10 to the power of negative 6, times 2.2 times 10 to the power of negative 6, divided by 0.25 squared, and what we get is 0 0.51 newtons. So I'm going to draw this out because this could be a little confusing. So this is charge Q3. What we're looking for is the net force on charge Q3. But we should know it's getting pulled to the left with a force of 0 0.14 newtons. Okay, so it's getting pulled by this one to the left, 0 0.14 newtons. But it's also getting pulled to the right by this one over here with a force, I should make this a lot bigger actually of 0 0.51 newtons. So we see that this is actually has a higher charge than this one. However, since it's further away, the force is a lot weaker. And even though this is a weaker charge, what we see is it's a lot closer. And since it's a lot closer, the force is a lot higher. So now what the net force is, force net, I'm just gonna make this positive and that one negative. So I'm gonna 0 0.51 minus 0.14. And we have the net force is equal to 0 0.37 newtons. Alright guys, thanks for watching.